okay? Um, I was really stoked when we went 309 from a 730 student high school, public school, farm, farm country, and then I get to, to the NISCA conference this year and sit down with a young lady who coaches at a 500 student high school and had her boys go 305. Uh, so congratulations, uh, Shonda, good work. It's pretty awesome. Um, on the girls' side, we're 146, 136, and 330. So again, pretty proud of those numbers for that size school. Um, we've had some All-Americans, individuals, and relays. That's been a lot of fun. Um, and it's all kind of based on how we train kids up and, and the power and the pace. So this is a piece that I wanted to share, um, a little bit more background on Hamilton swimming and diving. Every year, every team, we do a core covenant. Um, and one of our core covenants, one of the, one of the uh, two that are on every year, Pride and Legacy. So Legacy is something that we hang on to pretty hardcore in Hamilton. Um, the success that we've had, the people that we've developed. Um, so this is our legacy. We have this up on our whiteboard. Um, at training, we have a, a ginormous whiteboard on wheels, uh, and this stays on there 24-7. Uh, so our legacy, we talk about training. We talk about our taper meet. So we train smart and hard. We plug in every day. We have that one after the uh, awesome Ted Lasso series. Uh, if you haven't watched Ted Lasso as a coach, you must. It is. I laugh and I cry and I learn. And it's it's really good. Um, race with passion. Um, in that we we talk about a full athlete. Uh, You've got to have heart, you've got to have your mind plugged in, um, and you've got to obviously train your body to do it. Support your team in training, racing, and life, um, and then crush your taper meet. So every day we talk about rehearsing for our taper meet. And we, um, we don't throw dual meets away, uh, but we use our dual meets as rehearsals for our end of the season meet, whether that's conference or state, whatever it might be for them. So our primary focus in season is to make our cuts so we make it to the state meet. So some of the equipment that we use. Um, we have a lot of equipment. I enjoy that. The kids like it. It's fun. Uh, they get to do different things on different days. Socks. This is what we call socks. They, they sell power socks. Um, they sell them, but they're like 35 bucks a pair. Um, that's too rich for my blood. So we get socks. They're just... I think they're with quick adjust uh, that we use. So I think it's eight of them for 22 bucks, something like that. So you get four pairs for $22, that kind of budget. So we, we use our socks quite a bit, uh, parachutes, all different kinds of parachutes, all different sizes, all different makes and models. Um, buckets, like regular old five-gallon chlorine buckets that everybody has around their pool. We tie surgical tubing to them, use old belts, drill some holes in the bottom. We use our buckets. Uh, weight belts, um, I'll talk a little bit more about weight belts, paddles. Obviously, you all have paddles. Um, we have, again, very fortunate, our boosters, along with some of our fundraising and hosting some meets. Um, we have... Uh, four power towers, uh, plus we have another four station um, bucket system from rrace.net, um, Randy Reese. Uh, and then we have four power racks. Um, so those are not cheap, but we use them a ton. Um, and we, we got help buying those. Um, we use tennis trainers, tennis balls, and wiffle balls. Uh, power harness, which is a fairly new thing for us. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the power harness uh, in a bit. Med balls on deck, on the blocks, in the pool. We use fins, short fins, mirrors, uh, short cord bands um, that we use for stationary swimming, long cord bands, and spend the extra money. If you've never used bands before, uh, you get the band. Uh, they're, they're more expensive. I tried to go cheap and get some without safety cords. When they break, it's not good. So when the, when the safety corded uh, breaks, they don't really go anywhere. Um, so bonus of the safety cord, when you have one of those break, I cut that cord out, it's like 80 feet of cord. Cut that cord out, and you can use it for all kinds of things. It's really, really good, like 
uh, a good rope. Quick connect for the for the bands that we have for the long belts. Um, we also use them with our uh, power harness and with our power tower and power racks. So those are worthwhile. Rather than kids always taking time getting in and out of, in and out of belts, the quick connect snaps together and they're on their way. Uh, they can just put a belt on when we're going through station work. It's easy peasy. So how we use the equipment. This is. As I went through preparing for this, like power and pace sounded like a great idea when I first started. Uh, but as I, as I was preparing for it, I'm, I really there's a lot of stuff out there about pace work. Um, and so that pace piece will be pretty short near the end. We'll talk a lot about the power pieces. And we call power anything where we're putting ourselves under a load that isn't normal. We're not just free swimming. So we're putting ourselves under some kind of a load. So with our socks, we use them on our feet, secure them with the underwater work, uh, kick work, resistance, like go full, full sprint, but with the socks on. Um, and, you know, it, it adds another layer to that. Uh, socks with paddles, getting more power work, really feeling the catch more because you've got that resistance behind you. We do a lot of zona work. When we do aerobic work, most often than not, it's done zona style. We call it zona work. So it's kind of opposite side, right paddle, left fin, left paddle, right sock, whatever it might be. And we mix that up. Maybe one hand has a tennis ball. I don't know. But we mix up having something on right foot, something on left hand, or uh, opposite. And we also do some of the same work. So right tennis ball, right, uh, right fin, Next time around, paddle, left sock. It just gets the kids one more piece to get plugged in, to learn a little bit, to see a little bit what's going on in their body, in their skin. Um, so a lot of our aerobic work will do Zona style. And then we also use our socks. Um, we use our socks on our hands. Uh, you can see on the wrist. Um, very little bit because it's really hard, and it's hard on, on the shoulder. Uh, so we do very little, small doses of recovery work. And that's really what we're working on, is, is that recovery. And then we also ball them up, put them in our hands, and use them like, um, like we would our tennis balls or our wiffle balls. Um, and that just, more often than not, we'll use that as part of a rotation where they'll be on their feet for a 25, they get to the wall. Now we're going to put them on their on their hands, you know, in their hands, just to mix things up. <coughs> Some different ways that we use them on our feet with our underwater work, kick work. Um, one thing we really like to do is uh, underwaters from a dead stop. So they go out, maybe at the flags or so, drop down underwater parallel to the top, dead stop, start their body undulation, um, and they can really feel where their whip is, um, the kind of speed that they're able to generate then to take the socks off uh, is, is pretty awesome. Um, turn work with socks on is, is phenomenal. Uh, they really have to work at snapping their heels over. Uh, the higher their feet go, the harder the turn is. So we, we try to teach a low snap of the heels over the top of the water. Um, on your short axis turns, driving the knees in when you have that resistance on your feet. Um, it really makes them aware of the path that their feet and knees are taking, um, and then also feeling that resistance. Um, parachutes, we've got different size chutes for different abilities um, and for different outcomes. So we might use, uh, so we have some finesse uh, chutes, they make a uh, Reds are pretty small, and then blues are a little bit bigger, and then we have some some uh, zippered spinny suits that you, or shoots that you can make all different sizes, uh, so you can increase, decrease resistance, all the way up to our speedo shoots, uh, the, the dragsters. I don't know if they make those anymore, but speedo shoots are pretty tough to pull down the pool. Um, so, and then along with with the parachutes, our buckets. So we use them pretty similar to the parachute. Uh, the surgical tubing, some holes in the bottom. Um, if you don't drill the holes in the bottom, 
once you start going, the bucket fills and the resistance drops. But if you have those holes in the bottom, you can go through and the resistance stays. And then more often than not, we have weight in the buckets. Um, help sink them down below the kids a little bit. Um, we go anywhere from a pound or two up to, if somebody's really pissing you off, you can load that thing right up. Um, just kidding. Kind of. Um, weight belts. So this is a fairly new one for us. Um, I had always liked the idea of weight belts, um, but I never, they're expensive. Weight's expensive. Um, so I never really got them until probably about four years ago. I finally, we, we came into about $1,000 that somebody gave to us to, to spend. And so we went out and bought a bunch of weight belts. Um, so we have, boy, I don't know, probably, I don't know how many weight belts we have. Um, but we bought a boatload of weight. Um, with the weight belts, we work primarily body position work. So we're putting the weight belt on. Usually the weight is on our backside. Um, and we, you've got to start small. You put two pounds of weight on a swimmer here and, and ask them to maintain body position. For a lot of kids, um, it's, it's hard. It's hard to do. You think two pounds, not a big deal. It's hard to do. Um, and we don't want to do something overall with all of our power work that we do. We don't want to do things that take kids out of their normal stroke. We want to make their normal stroke better. Um, so we don't want to take them away and make things bad for them. We want to do things that enhance what they already do well uh, and find ways for them to continue to develop. So start small. A little bit goes a long way. Um, once we get like a full-grown high school male, um, might be boy, probably the most we've ever put on a kid is like 14 pounds. You put 14 pounds on a, on a swimmer. Um, I, you guys probably saw the video of the kid the coach, I think, ended up getting fired. I'm not 100% sure, but put a, put a boatload of weight on a kid, and the kid could, was struggling to even stay at the surface. Um, that's not the goal. That's not the goal. And the goal isn't to see, oh, yeah, I, I can do the most weight. The goal is to get better at swimming. Um, so we do some work, float work with, with weight. Okay, start small um, and, and just get them floating on top of the water, engaging the core flattening out, okay, keeping their hips and legs high, so they're pressing through the chest, hips and legs high. If they can float well with a couple of pounds on their back, you take that weight off and you're like, is that kid wearing a blue 70? Like all of a sudden hips are pot, like it's just beautiful. Um, and then we work speed with weight. So a lot of, we call it sprints, but start at the flags, layout position, hips and legs high, dead stop. And then on the whistle, they got to make it to the other flags as fast as they can. Do three or four of those, uh, and then pull the belt off. And it's, it's pretty cool to watch. Um, weight belts, I really, really like. Uh, if you have a breaststroke or butterfly that's having a hard time pressing through, getting to that next catch, uh, popping the hips, you put some weight here, and it and make them accentuate that a little bit. And then when you take it off, it's like, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, paddles, obviously, everybody has paddles. Everybody uses paddles. Um, two ways we use paddles, maybe a little less normal. Um, we use paddle, we call it paddle head. Again, most of you guys probably saw the video. There's, they've been out there on Instagram and whatnot. You put a paddle on the top of their head. They've got to swim. Keep the paddle on the head. You have a kid that wonky breath or bad, uh, bad head position. Have them do paddle head during warm up. We do probably two to three hundred yards of paddle head every day, mostly on recovery type stuff or warm up type stuff. Um, so we might do 100 or 200 during our warm up set. We might do 100 during your recovery uh, uh, time throughout practice or at the end of practice. And then the other zone of work uh, that I talked about earlier um, is something that our kids get engaged in doing. Um, we have, and, and this is my fault, 100% my fault. I mentioned I don't like coaching kids doing aerobic work because I think it's boring. But they're not doing it well. Um, zone of work is one way that we help engage our kids during aerobic work. So it's not just, uh, okay, we're going to slug through, get this crap done. So Mondays are usually our big aerobic days. 
we do a lot of zonal work on Monday. Um, and then the power towers. Okay, this is like my favorite stuff to do um, with the power towers. And we kind of, you have to develop your own system of how you, what you call things, um, what weights are used, things like that. So we use uh, really four main uh, weights in our buckets. We've got light, moderate, mod heavy, and heavy. Um, so I can tell any of my assistant coaches, all right, lanes seven and eight, those buckets are going to be mod heavy. Uh, they're going to be doing 12 and a halves. Lanes five and six, those are going to be heavy. They're going to go uh, 15 meter blasts. Um, one and two are going to be light. They're going to be doing technique work. They know water to put in uh, to get light, mod heavy, uh, mod, mod heavy, and heavy. Um, one, one thing that's all about when you've got, you know, when you've got 20, 30 kids on a team, all different levels. Uh, so one thing that we keep handy is um, we've got diving bricks. We got boat anchors, which was the cheapest way for me to buy weight over the last probably 12 years or so. Buy boat anchors, love them. If you get the like the three winged ones, you can cut the wings off. It's pretty cheap, pretty cheap way to get weight. Um, and then we also have weight plates. So we have we've asked our kids through the years if you guys have a weight set at home, we got one that don't use. We'd love to have it. So when we're setting up our power towers, um, we're setting out a combination of bricks, plates, and um, and our anchors. So a kid comes along, you know, you have a 21.50 freestyler coming coming along after a 28.50 freestyler just gets done. So probably going to be pulling a little bit more weight. Um, so they know, okay, every station that I go to, I, I'm a uh, I can do two anchors more than, than what's standard. And they know that, they do that. Uh, it's not on the coast anymore. They figure out what they can do. Um, that, you know, well, I'm a two anchor kid. So when we're doing power work, I get two anchors. Um, the one thing I would caution about when you let kids make that choice, again, don't let them break themselves down. Um, we don't want them under such a heavy load or too heavy a load for what we're trying to accomplish that it, they don't get to accomplish what we're working on. Um, so on our power towers, we do everything from drill work and technique work uh, to uh, a drill under light resistance or some kind of resistance to accentuate uh, the benefit of the drill. So we do, we do drill work, technique work uh, on a tower. Uh, which is kind of fun. Underwater work, P push off in underwater, under low. Uh, underwater, heavy bucket. Effort that goes into needing to get yourself off from that wall under a heavy load uh, translates to some pretty sweet underwater work for us. We'll do two pumps straight. Really focused on not the, how fast they're moving the weight out. We want them really focused on grabbing and moving through. Um, so we would call that straight power work. Um, we work tempo. Um, we have not been blessed with kids that swim with great tempo. We have to work and work and work and work and work at it. I don't know why. We have to work on a lot. So one thing we want to make sure when we're working our, on the power towers in particular is that we don't, if we're, if we're working pace type stuff or pace preparation stuff, that we're focused on having race tempo. Uh, so we, we might use a tempo trainer along the power tower. The power hunter is a new one. This is, um, I think it's from Swim Smart, uh, that website. A couple of coaches that innovate some products and, and put them out there for sale. Kids love power harnesses. Some of them hate it. Um, our girls generally do not like it because one part of the harness goes right down the front, and it's not comfortable for them. Some of our guys absolutely love them. Um, so they get an option of either using the power harness, it's like a, almost like a backpack with a strap and a strap, hook up in the back, 
Some kids love them. Some don't. They get the choice. Do you want to use a belt? Do you want to use a power harness? But it's just another tool to have um, that. And then the clip snacks I talked about already. Huge time saver, um, especially as you're going through and doing some power rotations on and off the rack. Um, just makes it a whole lot easier. Um, and then we'll use additional equipment with the power tower. So sometimes you might have fins and paddles on. Um, sometimes you might have, we might do sock work um, at the tower. And then the power rack. Uh, so the racks are very specific. Um, again, we had towers for a long time. We've had towers for a long time. We started with the race.net, BC tower, awesome. Um, a lot of coaches build those. I think, Kyle, did you build some? I think I saw that on your Instagram. Um, so they're, they take up a lot of space. So if you build one, I would suggest build it with some couplings that you can pull apart when you're hosting a big meet or something. You can get them off the deck. It just makes life a little bit easier. I was reluctant to get the power rack um, because they are, it is pretty specific. Um, I wish I would have gotten them forever ago because the progress that we see is make um, and just drop dead sprinting with the power, uh, with the power rack is phenomenal. Um, and it's very measurable. Uh, we keep track of number of made repeats. We keep track of their weight. Um, in our condensed season, uh, we've adapted Jim Steen's system um, just because his is set up on like a 22-week season. We have a 14-week season. We can't, with kids that don't swim year-round, we can't just throw them on a power rack at our first or second practice. We've got to work them into shape enough that they can do the power rack and hit their times. So our time ranges for the power rack, and these are from Jim You've got to time it from feet leave until it tops out. So you've got to have a pretty reliable timer. So that's, this is the system that we've draw, um, drawn up for us. It works for me and my assistant coaches. Let the kids time the kids. At Kenyon, Jim Steen let the kids time the kids. But he also coached at Kenyon. Those kids are smart. Mine, not so much. So they're, they're reliable, they're dependable. Uh, mine would be. So we do repeats on 30 seconds, which allows me to time two athletes at once. So we set up two athletes. I stand in the middle, typically. Um, one athlete that leaves the wall top and bottom, one athlete that leaves the wall 15 and 45. Um, so that allows me, if they're in the ranges, obviously having them 15 seconds apart works. Uh, they top out on the rack. I yell their time. I get to the next kid. They keep going as long as they stay within the time range. Okay? If they're below the time range, we don't really want that. Okay? I mean, if they're totally fast, that's great. Um, but we want to find the way that allows them to go between 5.8 and 6.5 for freestyle. Why? I don't know. Jim Steen's smarter than me. That's all I know. And it works. Okay? So he says 5.8 to 6.5. We go 5.8 to 6.5. It's just the way it is. So, um, it's max effort. It's not underwater work. They're supposed to push, surface, and swim. They're not spending time underwater dolphin kicking. This is on top of the water work. It's got to be at race tempo. Um, every, and, and this is the critical part, every repeat has to be max effort. You can't take a repeat off. You can't go 90% at it. It's got to be max effort. So we find our baseline for our athletes. Um, some of our kids can't make it. We put a plate on the power rack and they can't make it within the ranges they don't get to do power rack work get yourself better so you can make it so we find a baseline usually starts when we start our rack work our goal would be to make six repeats in the time ranges and we'll play around with the weight to see where we're at so if they let's say they start with two plates and they go 5.0 for freestyle oh you need another plate second repeat they go 5.8 third repeat they go 5.8 Fourth repeat, they go 6 0. Like, as long as they keep making, we're going to keep them going typically to set that baseline. Um, once they, to, I believe his college program, I think he goes to 24 repeats. And once they go 24 repeats, they add weight 
and then obviously drop back down uh, when you add. It's pretty phenomenal when you add a plate to a kid um, to see their times all of a sudden. They're like, oh man, this is way harder. And you're talking 10 pounds that's getting pulled through, I think it's five pulleys. So it's really, I mean, you're only increasing their weight a small fraction of that 10 pounds, but the difference that it makes, the force that it takes for them to pull that away is, is pretty incredible. So we allow for one miss because high school season, two and a half hour practice to get kids through. Um, I don't want a kid to, to have an oops repeat and be like, you're out. So we allow for one miss. Um, that's another one of our adaptations. So once they have 16 makes, usually we find if they can make 16, when we add a plate, if they can make six, it's a really good day. And then we hope the next time they make eight or 10 and then work their way up to 16 and then we bump them up and wait again. Um, and someone that's smarter than me could probably figure out the, the correlation between what they're able to pull for 16 repeats and how fast they're able to swim a 50 free. Um, I, I've never done it but I know it passes the eye test for me. <clears throat> tempo trainer, um, we use to keep honest with race tempo. Like I said earlier, we have a hard time with tempo in Hamilton. Always have, I don't know if it's the nitrates in our water, who knows. Um, we have a hard time getting kids to swim with tempo. So we use tempo trainers quite a bit. Uh, again, an expensive piece of equipment, but well worth it for us. Um, and we'll do some test sets to help them find optimum tempo. So a blanket, you know, every freestyler needs to swim at a tempo of 1.1 of per cycle. Um, we do everything by cycle, not by, uh, by single stroke. Um, or every breaststroker needs to be at 105. Okay? We, we let the kids experiment a bit and try to find their optimum level with the help of a coach. Um, tennis balls, wiffle balls, okay? working on catching up the arm uh, a ton. I really like tennis balls. My assistant coach really likes wiffle balls. He pushes wiffle balls. I push tennis balls. I don't think it really matters. The biggest piece is we say you can't hold them uh, like a ninja. You gotta palm the ball so you're really using up all of the surface area of your hand and not able to catch with the hand. We want them feeling up here. We do it for all four strokes. Um, we do a fair amount of um, tennis ball or wiffle ball work. You can't call it just ball work with boys. Not good. Got to say tennis balls or wiffle balls. Um, we've also tried it with and, and had some success. I don't think I have this on here. Um, but we've had some success with using lacrosse balls. If you've held a lacrosse ball, they're a little bit heavier. They have some weight to them. Um, and for a kid that has a, has a lot of this going on in his stroke, if you get him extending or her extending with that um, lacrosse ball, just below the top of the water, and then you take that lacrosse ball away, it's like, oh, now I get it. Um, flyers and, and breaststroke are really good too, working on that press into the catch. So, um, and then the power harnesses, uh, like I said earlier, it can make life more comfortable for some of your athletes. If they're comfortable, they're probably a little bit more happy to, to uh, uh, put, the, put the effort in. It's a good bullet for kids that struggle with body position under load as well. Sometimes when they get a belt hooked up to them with some weight, you can see hips drop a little bit. That power harness, getting that pressure here can help some people really uh, correct that poor body position when they're under load. Um, med balls, we use them um, underwater off the bottom of the pool. Uh, with a med ball overhead, we've used buckets. We've done lots of different things, but med balls are a good thing to have around. Um, we want to teach throwing your hands on a start Two med balls up against the wall and then get them up on the blocks and go can work wonders. Um, we do some vertical kick work with med balls. Kids love that. Um, we, we call it playing catch. So they're like, oh, we get to play catch today. Yep. While you vertical kick with med balls. Throwing them back and forth. So have fun with that. Um, we prefer short fins. Um, we had long fins for a long time. And then uh, we got to our first of the zoomers. Boy, probably 2011, 2012, something like that. I'm like, holy cow, 
they really make the kids work their kick. It's not, they can't be lazy when they have Zoomers on. Um, Zoomers kind of sucked though, they tore the kids' feet up. They were, um, we had a kid come in with some of those, the body surfing fins. Um, they're real big, like Cal, and all that. They're expensive, but um, we got a, a full set of those uh, probably five or six years ago. And uh, our kids absolutely love them. They've got to work hard when they're kicking. Um, if you don't work with the, the you know, we got uh, the Finis brand, they're heavy, they don't float, they sink. So you put those on, um, and all of a sudden fins aren't quite the party that the two long fins are that they just kind of laze their way through and rock it across the pool. Uh, so we really like short fins. Um, short bands. We use short bands for stationary swims. We do stationary swims here. Um, so I, I forget. I would tried to find out who I got our mirrors from, but we've got three or four. It's really just like a some that's reflective. Set them on the bottom of the pool. Kids them lined up, and they do some stationary swims over top of the mirror. You have a kid that crosses over here or out here. Have them stationary swim over top of that mirror, and. All of a sudden, they're seeing what I'm seeing, and they go, oh, OK. And they can self-correct. Are... Yes, they do. Finis. Finis. There you go. So um, very. I, it's just another tool, just another tool. Um, straight up stationary swims, uh, stationary swim to release. Uh, those are, I, I have a lot of kids. That's their preferred method of warm up. You see our kids at state meet or even at dual meets. They'll have, they'll bring a partner along with them. They bring a short band. And what we do, I'll pretend that this is the edge of the pool here, swimmers in the water. They're going to do like maybe two or three push offs under load. We'll have resisted, you know, kids stand back a little bit. When they push off, they're going to get out and do like a three cycle stationary swim. And then the partner drops his hand, very important, underwater, and then releases. Okay, if you release from up here, you're getting welts. You drop your hand underwater and then release. Um, and then they, they'll go from that stationary, like three cycle stationary swim into a pace effort for maybe 10 yards or so. And it really gets their, their juices flowing. They really feel the water well. They enjoy it. Um, so that's one thing that we do, stationary swim to release. Uh, and then we challenge keeping distance from the wall. Um, how, how many cycles can you stay that max distance away from the wall? Some kids can only make it two cycles. Some kids can make it up to maybe six, seven, eight cycles um, away from the wall. So almost done with the equipment. Uh, long cord bands. Um, our rule for long cord bands, so bands that stretch across the pool, if a band is being stretched, the people on either end of it have goggles on. So if you're on deck, that's just I, the last thing I want is for something goofy to happen, a band to break, get somebody in the eye. I've seen what it does when it doesn't hit an eye, but like wraps on a leg, and all of a sudden they have like a serpentine welt on their leg for a few weeks. So it's not good. Um, one really fun thing to do, usually Christmas break time, but plug your ears so I don't get in trouble with NFHS. They will take three or four long bands and put them around the small kid on the floor and stretch them across the pool. A couple kids hold on to them. When they let go, they jump up, and they see how far they can make it across the pool. It, it's a whole lot of fun. Um, we had one time that really got away from us. A uh, kid almost got decapitated by the flags. Uh, it was not good. Um, he, he went really far, though. It was cool. Um, so always with goggles on. Spend the extra for the safety cords. Uh, we do resisted swims across the pool. Uh, that's, I mean, obviously, you either hook onto the block or somebody holds it. You're swimming, trying to make it to the other side. Um, they have three different levels um, of resistance. So kids can kind of progress through from, from I think it's yellow, blue, red, or something like that. Um, and they can, uh, you know, they get the progressive resistance. The further they go across the pool, obviously, the harder it is to keep going. Um, and it gives the kids a sense of accomplishment. If they've never been able to make it across, they make it across. Always a good thing. And then, primarily, we use our bands for assisted swims. 
Um, love, love, love assisted swims, especially around taper time. So we teach the kids how to assist. That's very important. Um, our technique, you go low, hand over hand between your legs, uh, and you can really get a kid ripping across the pool. Um, obviously, it's over speed work. It forces them to swim with better tempo. Um, they find inefficiencies in their stroke. They can find ways to, um, when they're going that fast, uh, they can find some, some uh, inefficiencies. You want me to reply? How do I? Okay. No, you're good. Um, and then one thing that we really like to do uh, is um, do like a full 25 assist and then do like a 20-yard assist so the, the person on deck stops assisting at the flags, tries to get some slack in it, and the swimmer in the water tries to carry the speed. And then the third repeat might be stop pulling at the 15 meter. Um, so now they're trying to carry that speed for even further. And you can see some kids do some really cool things um, when, they're, when they're going really fast and then try to maintain that fast, um, which is a lot of fun. Um, and then the pace work that we do. I, I mean, I started writing down pace work stuff that we do, and I'm like, well, duh, I think everybody does this to some level, right? So this is, I mean, we do a lot of pace 25s, uh, 15 seconds rest at, at, we call it P100. So we'd say P100, P200, P500. Um, we break down the kids' times. Every kid has to have, has to fill out a goal sheet. We use their goal sheets to find goal pace times. Um, I have a pretty sweet spreadsheet that I stole from somebody so long ago, I don't even know who I stole it from, but it's a pace chart. It might have been on the Swimming Wizard uh, website. It's possible. But anyway, I, I got the spreadsheet. You type in their goal times, and it tells you out 25, out 50, middle 50, back half, uh, and pace per 25. It's pretty sweet. And it does, you can do it for every stroke, every distance. Um, it's, it's really a cool tool. So every season, um, usually about first-ish week of the season, we'll do a, a goal setting party. And they've got to fill out a sheet with their goal times. I then take those, put them on goal cards for them, but also pace charts. And every kid gets a pace chart printed, cut out, laminated. They have it at the edge of the pool. They know what their, what their uh, pace times are for their goal times. And I tell them all, the best thing that I would want to do is have to print you off a new goal sheet because you upped your game. So that's really what we're working on. So we work for, um, like our pace 100 work is primarily 25s. Um, and then we work towards trying to get 12 at their goal time. Um, we might start as low as trying to just hang uh, two pace 25s at goal pace. P200, we do a lot of 50s primarily. Again, starting as low as two, working towards 12. Uh, P500, uh, full disclosure, we suck at 500s. Okay, a coach that doesn't like to coach aerobic work, no big surprise. My boys, sorry, not my, our boys' 500 freestyle record, okay, is 455. Not because we haven't had good athletes, I just don't want to have good athlete go swim the 500. We go 200s on down. That's what that's our jam. Uh, so I am I am no Denny Hill. I'll put it that way. The guy used to score like seven eight athletes in the 500 free at state meet every year. Not not us. So I will full disclosure. Uh, P500. We do a lot of 50s, 75s, 100s, 125s. Try to figure out what the individual swimmer needs. Uh, hopefully none of my 500 residents will watch this. But the kids that can't sprint. You have to go swim the 500. Like that's the, if we can turn you into a sprinter, we're going to turn you into a sprinter. That's just the way it is. Um, and then we do a fair number of broken swims. We start with very few broken swims early in the season, and we'll, by the time we get to taper, almost our entire practice will be broken swims um, with some type of power built in. So broken swims, hundreds, we typically do 25, 50, 25. Uh, that's my favorite way to break, but some kids need to work on their out speed. Uh, some kids need to work on that back half 50 speed. So <clears throat> you've, you've got to find what you like to do and what helps you prepare to go fast.
And then <clears throat> probably, <coughs> probably my favorite and our kids' favorite, we call them Australian back half. Why Australian back half? I don't know. That's just what we call them. Sorry. <coughs> um, so for our back half swims, we're shooting for back half 100 speed or back half 200 or back half 500. Early in the year, we may go as low as three. Like, you've got to have three makes, 350 freeze below your back half 50 goal pace before you can leave practice. Some kids might get it done in the first three. Some kids might take six. Um, it's kind of cool because once kids get done, they don't just bounce. They stay and cheer their teammates on. Um, it can be a frustrating day for some kids. If they're having a bad day, it can be a frustrating day to sit there and swim repeats and not make your goal time and have to freaking do it again because your coach is a jerk. Um, but it, when they when they do make it, that sense of accomplishment is pretty good. The later we get in the season, obviously the more we do, um, we'll go as high as eight. Um, if you're making eight on two minutes, you've got a pretty dumb good chance of going your goal 100 times. Um, you're, you're, by the time you get three of them, and you can fake your way through three or four of them, but by the time you hit five, six, seven, eight, um, you're, you're in the hurt land. Uh, it's, it's not a whole lot of fun. And then we do the same for our 200 kids. Um, we top them out at 600s um, uh, for that back half 200. I won't talk about 500. Um, power and pace. So this is, uh, once I got to this point, I'm like, oh man, like it's, it's easier to see uh, than it is to explain how we do it, why we do it. Um, we talk a lot about PAP. We do PAP work, post-activation, potentiation. Um, and we call that doing something under a load that makes you either super aware of something that you're doing or something that you want to do, uh, and then putting that into your full stroke swimming at pace. Um, and we've had really, really good success of if we jump in and do a broken 100, um, they might have a good solid swim. But we found um, kind of through, I don't saw it somewhere because I steal everything that we do in the pool from somebody, um, but somebody must have done this. That's pretty cool. We're going to try it. And the first day we tried it, I was bored at how well it worked, um, how well our kids responded to it. Um, so a lot of the things that we do, fairly short burst uh, power work followed by pace work. And they don't get swim easy after the power work, before the pace work, they, they do their power work and then they go right into pace work. So some of the things that we do, um, we, we, we try to make pace effort either feel or be faster. Okay, so if, if we're talking 200, 500 pace work, we want it to feel easier. We want 100 out speed to feel easier. We don't want them to go slower, we want it to feel easier. Or your pace work better make you faster. So you're either easier at a particular pace or your pace is getting faster. So our resisted underwaters, we would do like the dead stop, resisted underwater with socks on, take the socks off, and then work underwater or turn work. Um, do some of those uh, dead start underwaters without the socks or work it right into some one turn 25s at race pace or something along those lines. When they are snapping, in their dolphin kicks um, with the socks on. They take the socks off and it's, I mean, boom, they're moving, they're moving. Uh, we've really transformed, especially some of our non-athletic kids into pretty dumb good underwater kickers by using this. Um, I'm not gonna say everybody's gonna, you know, have underwaters like Caleb Dressel or, or Kelsey Worrell, but they're gonna be better. You're, you're getting them better. Um, we'll do short banded push offs right into turn work. So, like with the short bands, you're going to have a partner or a coach on the deck. If the edge of the pool is here, maybe we're standing something like here, getting down nice and low so we're not pulling up on them, and they're doing like three or four or five resisted push offs. Take the quick connect off right into a strong push off underwater to the breakout, and then do some one turn 25s and really focused on getting on the wall and driving with power, getting into power position and driving off from the wall. Um, 2.5 pace 
effort with socks. I'm not going to go race pace when you have socks on, but we, we talk a lot about feeling that race effort and then taking the resistance off and then going the pace uh, with that effort in, in trying to race effort. Manageable. Um, we like to do a lot of builds with shoots right into uh, right into pace. So we'll go 325 pace, drop the shoot, 325 pace 100, or 350 pace 200. Again, it helps them feel the water for some, and that then leads to their pace work feeling better, better hook. Um, it's just it's it's a cool thing to watch. Uh, stationary swim to release in a pace effort. We talked a little bit about that one earlier. Um, weight belt 50 yard blast. Okay, we're going flags to flags. That's 15 yards. Drop it. Drop the weight belt, not literally, set it on the side of the pool, and then go into some pace 25s. We absolutely love this, love this, with our breast strokers and flyers. Um, really just helps accentuate what that feel is for them, um, popping hips and, and the chest. Tennis ball, 25, trying to hold 500 pace. And then drop the tennis ball right into 500 pace. Um, so really accentuating the catch, okay, up the arm. Do a, a few 25s like that, and then when you drop the, you drop the tennis balls, all of a sudden that, that pace 500 feels pretty, pretty easy to do. Um, and then we do a lot of choice power work into choice pace work. Once you're, if, if you decide to do some of this, once your kids get used to it, they find what works best for them, uh, what they enjoy doing. We let them take equipment to meet. Um, you know, what works for you and what helps you swim your best at pace and then take that tool with you wherever you go. So choice into choice pace, let your kids experiment with what works best for them. Options are endless. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's people, I, I'm never the smartest person in the room. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have your own ideas that are way better than mine. Um, <clears throat> so if you think of them, you can share them with me. I'll pass them on to my coach. Uh, example power rotation. So this might be a, a power day uh, or a power set for us. We are eight lane pool. We'll do eight different, some kind of power. Sometimes we'll combine, we'll have four stations. Sometimes we'll have eight, sometimes we'll have six. All depends on how creative I'm feeling, but this is the kind of stuff that gets me jazzed up to, to go to practice. Because um, I know I'm gonna see kids doing great efforts, okay? And they're going to be getting better. So we'll do something like this, eight lane rotation. They would do two PAP 25s uh, after each rotation at max effort. Sometimes we work PAP 25s or PAP 15s or PAP 12s right into our so, one. Lane one, heavy rack. They are reps of max underwaters, okay? So they're just, they're dropping underwater, pushing off underwaters for as far as they can go on a heavy bucket, our really good kickers might make it to the near 15 meter, okay? And that's another piece for us. We, we name our pool, our spots in our pool. Near 15 meter would be the closest red float, 12 and a half, far 15 meter, flags. Sometimes we'll drop cones. You're going first cone, second cone, third cone, whatever. Find a way to, to denote that. So you go four max underwaters, then you're going four reps, blasting to the near 15 meter. So for that one, we're doing max speed underwaters, working the breakout stroke, breakout cycle, and then getting to that 15 meter as fast as you can. Okay? You do four, four max underwaters, then you're going four blasts to the near 15, dropping the belt, you're going two PAP 25s, move on to the next thing. Number two is a moderate bucket, and you're going four 50s with paddles. So in this one, our focus, Probably, I don't know, because I don't. this picture is from like six years ago, so I don't remember. My guess is we were working on catch on our freestyle when we were swimming against that moderate heavy or mod bucket with paddles on our hands. Uh, we're working on our catch going away. We're not working on tempo. We're not working on speed. It's not about how fast you're getting across the pool. Um, 450s, and then they swim backstroke coming back. Lane three, 625s, big shoots. 
So our big shoots would be our blue shoots, and they work in build, really focused on hook and water. I'm sure that's what we were do doing that day is hook and water. Lane four, you're doing 625s with a little shoot. So now we're in our red shoots, smaller shoots, less resistance, a little closer to, to normal swimming, uh, but still under a load. Lane five, again, heavy. Um, we're working our underwaters and our blasts again. Lane six, mod heavy. Now we're blasting to the middle of the pool. Okay, so we're trying to carry speed from the wall to the middle of the pool. Every time we're doing blast work, think max effort. That's just a word I use for max effort. Blast into the middle. Um, lane seven, eight turns off the bottom to the hip out. So in lane seven, middle of the pool is about eight and a half feet deep. So they're going down, turning off the bottom, power off the bottom, underwaters, and trying to get their hips out of the water. Um, so they can carry quite a bit of speed, eight and a half feet up through the water. So first four, you're gonna go with socks. Then you're gonna go four turns off the bottom without. And then you're going two one turners, max speed, focused on max speed off the wall. Um, and then into a PAP, you know, PAP 25s. Lane eight, assisted swims. Lane eight, lane 12, assisted swims. We've got our L-shaped pool. Diving well is here. Kids walk out to the corner. That's roughly halfway down lane eight. They hop in with a belt. Uh, with a long belt on, swim to the side, their partner walks down the side of the pool, gets behind lane eight. You good? Yep, I'm good. All right, here we go. And it's an assisted swim down. So, like, just as assisted swims, hard to time those, hard to figure out how many they can get in in a given, as you're trying to work each lane to be roughly the same amount of time. Um, so, they know if they're in the assisted swim lane, their behind better be moving. Because wherever I'm at on the deck, if I see people standing around in lane eight, they're gonna get ripped. They're there to get as many assisted swims in as possible. And I can see them from wherever. So that's an example of what we would do for, for some power plus pace. Now this is, we're just working PAP 25. So we're just, it's a max speed focus kind of a day. And then this would be one of our choice days. So. This is way long ago. I, I look through my phone. Usually I take a picture when we do these types of days and like, you know, because they're fun for me to go back and look through. Well, since I'm not coaching anymore, I dumped a lot of the pictures. So these are the old ones. Um, now when we do a power plus pace day, the whole left side is full, the whole right side is full. And then the biggest piece that my kids really like, something else with console. So if they've come up with something new that we haven't done before, or if they find something that really works well for them and it's not on the board, come and talk to me about it. And if I think it's a good idea, let's rock it out. Let's go. So in this one, like shoot builds, stationary band work, socks, build work, return work, rack work, working underwaters, blasts, or builds. Um, this is how old this is. We actually had power racks. So we call our power towers the racks. Now we don't, we have to differentiate between rack and, and tower. Uh, band resistance, whatever else, and then they can pick their pace work. And when you start seeing them take charge of their own swimming and finding out what works best for them, holy crap, does practice get fun? Because it takes the pressure off from you, puts the pressure on them, and they're, they're going to town, they're figuring things out. Um, Eve's going to put this on. Um, this last sheet has a Google Doc that has all of the, or most of the equipment that we use and where I got it from. Um, let me pull that up once. I think it'll be worth, oh my. I'll need to fix the access on that. Um, so one big, one big uh, uh, tool that I didn't talk about up to this point um, is Jake Schellenberger's book, um, Powers, Power and Towers and Swimming, something along those lines. Well worth it. Uh, it's got a boatload, a boatload of information in there. Um, a lot of this stuff I stole from him. So it's good stuff. Uh, anybody have any questions or? Yeah. So, 
Okay, here's the deal. The question was, where do I store all of this stuff? So, um, when our pool was first built, I was not hired yet. They built it with tiny little locker rooms, uh, a pretty small office, and not a whole lot of storage. Um, in 08, 08 or 09, we passed a bond, and my ask from that bond was that we add new locker rooms, a new office, and a big storage room. So my storage room is probably this big. It's big enough that I have a golf hitting net in it and keep all my stuff stored. So I'm pretty fortunate in that regard. Um, one deal I made with my custodians, and, and this is an important piece, when, if you get towers and racks or, or things like that, ask your custodians what they would prefer. Um, I just assumed, and we left them on the deck all the time. And finally, I had a custodian that just, like, she's in tears one night. And I'm like, Lisa, what's wrong? She's like, I'm so sick of these towers being everywhere, and I got to move them all the time when I got to clean, and it makes my job so much harder. Never thought of it. Never thought of it. And you know, I mean, anybody that's in education, when, you, when, you, when you're in uh, your school of ed, they tell you, make nice with people that make your life better. And that's the custodians, our A number one, custodians and the maintenance guys. Um, so we made a deal that day that we would, whenever possible, store them off deck. Um, so I actually have two storage rooms now, one on either end of the pool. Uh, but ultimately, if you can work out with your custodian a, a good place uh, to store, um, like the towers and the racks, um, that's super beneficial. Um, I've stored them. Like when we host big meets, we'll use our storage room as like our hospitality, and the racks go out in the hall. Uh, racks and towers go out in the hall. Um, as far as like our kids each get an equipment bag, uh, and they get socks, tennis balls, or wiffle balls, fins, kickboard, all that jazz. Um, so they store those. We've got hooks in our locker room. They store all those there. Um, that's really the bulk of the big equipment, I would say. How many racks do we have? Oh, I never finished that, did I? So we have the old R-Race rack that's got four stations, and then we have four towers, and we have four racks. So each of the towers is a two-station, so we can go 12 kids on a, to on a tower at a time, and then we have uh, four power racks, and those are all single. So... It's a lot of it's it's a lot of money. Like I, I don't like you you if you jump on Virginia's uh, Virginia Swim and Dive's Instagram, like that's a good follow. Todd DeSorbo is fun to follow. I don't know if he does their their uh, Wahoo uh, Instagram or not, but he's got a picture of their pool set up for a power day, and every lane has a tower all the way down. I don't I, they they've got to have thirty towers. It's insane. So, but it's fun. Kids like it. How often do we do power days? Um, in a normal week cycle for us, Monday would be an aerobic day. Get that crap done with. Um, we do we do mornings and we do aerobic in the mornings, um, and then Monday is a big aerobic day. Um, Tuesdays are meat day, and then Wednesdays we jump into a power day. Um, Thursday's a little more thresholdish, and then Friday, Saturday would be power days. We practice every Saturday. So, yeah. And we might we might work some other power in on aerobic days too. We you never know. So try to keep them on their toes. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs>